JFK assassination has a lot of importance in American history and history books, world history books, etc. It's a big deal, which is why I'm interested in it. I'm a big fan of history. I've been taking history classes through grade school, middle school, high school, and in college. I really enjoy it, so I enjoy the JFK assassination. The JFK assassination has a lot of uncertainty around it, which is why you, the audience, probably don't understand it as well as you could, which is why I'm here to explain it so you can give your own opinion on it. So today I will explain the main factual points of John F. Kennedy's assassination the morning of the actual assassination, days after my thoughts on the situation. Before I start, it's important to realize that the assassination itself happened on November 22nd, 1963, which is where we begin. So. According to Michael Kurtz, author of the JFK assassination debates in a book published by the University Press of Kansas 2006, he explains that Oswald that morning was normal. He didn't do anything out of the ordinary. His next morning is a little weird, but he didn't really do anything out of, out of the ordinary. So he's driving to the Texas School Book Depository, which is where he works, and he has a two foot long paper sack full of what he said was curtain rods. So then he has his friend, Wesley Frazier, drive him. He gets there, Wesley Frazier doesn't see anything out of the ordinary. Jack Doherty, the security guard at the depository, also doesn't see anything out of the ordinary. So it's a pretty normal day, nothing you know weird, according to other people. Kennedy's morning, exact same way, he's coming from another rally. He arrives on Air Force One, gets into his motorcade with Governor of Texas, Jack Connolly, and his wife, Jackie Kennedy, and they're gonna drive down um, downtown Dallas. So, there is some weird things found by Kurtz, and that's that Oswald didn't have his wedding band on that morning, according to his wife, and that he left just $170 for his family that morning, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. He's just random. And then Kennedy, was in a very good mood, and he kept trying to get out of the motorcade to say hi to people. Just dumb, you shouldn't do that, you're president, you're gonna get killed if you do that. So, what happened next is basically the main point of this presentation, and that's that the motorcade was driving down Houston Street, around Daly Plaza, and onto Elm Street. This is where it gets interesting, and according to Natalie Kamenkin, in an issue of the Dallas Morning News in 2019, she wrote that a coworker she had, who was there in, 20, in 1963, witnessed Kennedy get assassinated. I find this interesting because he gave the story of what happened, which is the factual story, and you still have all these conspiracies happening. However, this is what had happened. So, the act. On November 22, 1963, as Aaron Deichler, a history teacher at Bueller High School, explained to me in an interview um, the first shot was fired from the sixth floor of the school book depository by Oswald through Kennedy's neck, through Jack Connolly's shoulder, into his right wrist. So people are freaking out. People start looking at the sixth floor. They see this guy up there with a gun. He's still pointing. And he fires off another shot moments later, which goes into the back left of Kennedy's head. According to Deichler, like just a few short moments later, yet again, another shot's fired, and it just basically, Kennedy's skull explodes. Goes on the back of the motorcade. Jackie Kennedy, his wife, is trying to pick up the fragments of his skull. It's a really weird sight. You can see it in the Zapruder film, a famous film that just is recording the whole slow drive, and you see his head just explode. So then they drive to a Dallas hospital in Dow downtown Dallas, and eight minutes after they arrive, Kennedy's pronounced dead. So that's the act, that's the factual information, that's what happened. The third part to this is the aftermath. In the aftermath, you see a lot of investigation, you see a lot of pointing fingers and stuff, but what happened was a police officer in Dallas saw Oswald running up the famous grassy knoll, which is another part to, it was on the left of Kennedy as they were headed down Elm Street. And he sees Oswald running and he recognizes him when they bring Oswald into questioning and that's him. He is then uh, designated as like the murderer. To go along with this, he murdered another person that same day. 
It was a police officer who was at the rally. So Oswald, in an in article, in a journal article called the Kirkus Reviews, published in 2017, January 2017, Os they said that Oswald wasn't, he wasn't a stranger to assassination attempts as he was plotting to kill Major General Edwin Walker that year too. So Oswald's kind of a Marine, it's kind of crazy. He's not probably doing well mentally and yeah. So he's, he's, he's kind of going off the deep end. So he's charged that day, November 23rd, 1963, the day after the assassination. The next day, he's in a Dallas police court headquarters basement doing his normal, like they're, they're processing him, etc. When Jack Ruby, a man who had just donated money to the Kennedy Foundation, walks up with a 38 caliber Colt Cobra uh, pistol, revolver, and shoots him in the stomach, killing Oswald. So Oswald, the man that killed Kennedy, was murdered himself just two days later. With all this, it's important to realize that that's the factual information. There's a lot of conspiracies that lead to a lot of rabbit holes that don't make sense. That's what happened. That's what is accepted as happened. We are the Oswald murdered John F. Kennedy on November 22nd, 1963. So today, I've explained the main points of John F. Kennedy's assassination, the the morning of the actual assassination, the days after, and then my thoughts on it. I hope that if you're ever asked about the story of the situation, you understand it enough to have your own opinion, enough to explain it to someone, because I think that's important. I think that's what's most important about it. Thank you.